Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and a new edition of our online interview series. We want to talk for the first time to Omega Pacific Resources and Jason Lakeham, the yeah, CEO, is here with us. Good morning to Canada. How are you, Jason? Good morning. How are you? Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. All fine here and uh, getting late here in the evening on Saturday, but that's fine. Um, yeah, Jason, we know each other, I think, 15, 20 years. It's so funny. And now we came again together through the Zurich Invest event, which happens uh, on Monday evening in Zurich. Fantastic. So we do an upfront interview already. Your company is uh, new on our channel, and uh, we are always happy uh, to have new companies here to present. Um Can you shortly give us just a short overview? What is the company doing? Best sure. Best? Yes, we, we are also a new company. Uh, we came together um, and formed, uh, uh, brought in the asset early in, mm -hmm. in the spring of 2024. Uh, so we are um, a part of a group uh, called the Metals Group or a Metals Group company. And the Metals Group is really a, a technically focused team that operates uh, exploration development uh, internationally, but it's had a tremendous amount of success in, in recent years since 2018, particularly in the Tudagon region of the Golden Horseshoe in Northern British Columbia. So we've just recently optioned a, a property from a company called Kopar Minerals, and that property is the Williams property. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we just struck that option agreement in uh, February 29th of this year. And already we have uh, been able to return to the shareholders and to the market uh, some very good drill results from our 2024 uh, drill mm -hmm. program. So we can go into that a little bit more, but very new company. And again, very technically backed, uh, sort of tight team, a small team, but a very capable team with a, a tremendous amount of experience in the region. Okay, super. So your exploration company, uh, the focus is on gold, I think, and uh, a little bit also copper. I saw copper gold. So let's start with the Williams property. You did uh, like 11,000 meters of drilling um, and uh, also from you and uh, previous operators. And uh, yeah, so what does it look like? What are the grades? I think you had some good news uh, approximately 10 days ago, right? Absolutely. So the Williams property has two main targets or prospects on it. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is, uh, we'll call it the T-bill. The T-bill is um, epithermal in nature, uh, from what we can see, um, focused on gold. And, and the other target is called the GIC. Mm -hmm. And the GIC looks like a copper gold porphyry target mm -hmm. with a very significant magnetic uh, geophysical expression. And uh, that's where we're focused. Um, so as a historic, the historic work that's been completed was about 11,000 meters of drilling between both of those targets from previous mm -hmm. operators, dating back into the early 1980s, in fact. And uh, at that point in time, the, the property itself was very remote. Uh, fortunately for, for operators in the area, such as ourselves, there's a lot more infrastructure than there ever has been, and there continues to be development. So we, we, again, are focused on the GIC target. Um, and we followed up a, a really interesting drill hole that the former operators had, had uh, intercepted in 2022. Mm -hmm. And that hole had ended uh, in mineralization. So it was uh, about two grams per ton over 50 meters ending in mineralization. Well, that was very compelling to us because if, the, if there's a hole ending in mineralization, there's a chance that that could continue. <laughs> And so that's yes. what we did. And that's what we, uh, we referenced in our October 28 press release. We were able mm -hmm. to extend that hole. Uh, very fortunate for us uh, to be able mm -hmm. to re-enter that hole, extend it, so that we now have an intercept there, a total of 2.16 grams per ton gold over about 97, just shy of 97 wow. meters. Nice. Nice. That was our fourth hole on the property. Uh, so we, we based our, our location of our drill program in 2024 right at that Uh, historic hole from 2022. What we did is a fan of holes. Number one, to start from the epicenter, if you will, and start stepping out, seeing the breadth and the depth and the depth, and getting a better understanding of the, the structure of the mineralization. Mm -hmm. So our okay. first hole hit also 1.70 uh, uh, grams per ton over 140 meters, uh, pardon me, 104 meters. So very robust. And so there, mm -hmm. there's a very significant gold mineralization uh, there. And we're very, we'll be very focused in 2025 to see the extension of that. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, although we see a copper gold target, 
our drilling so far has not intercepted um, any copper mineralization. We're not too worried about you know that at this point in time because we've only drilled you know a very small expression of this uh, this target, which actually spans about twelve kilometers long. We've drilled like less than five percent, you know, as, as far as uh, the the area of interest that we have there at GSC. So lots of great potential. Okay, so to what depths is that now going down? What you have uh, seen or discovered here? Sure, Th this is uh, going coming in from about 250 meters depth, oh. um, okay. and and it's a uh, we have high grade within that, but you will notice and we're drilling it sort of on the side of a mountain, and the the mineralization is seems to be trending along the, the topographical feature of the mountain. And we're actually open to surface there. So mm -hmm. as we go into the 2025 program, we'll continue to drill upslope um, mm -hmm. and where at the very top of the ridge, about uh, 250 meters higher than we are in elevation from our where our drill pad was, uh, we see historic sampling, trenching, mechanical trenching, upwards of five grams per ton. So we know there's mineralization outcropping on surface at the top of that ridge, and we'll continue to chase that there. So there is definitely a potential for either an underground bulk tonnage situation here. These are very early days. We've just had that discovery. Mm -hmm. But we also see, because of where we are topographically, um, the potential to even um, eventually see a, envision an open pit sort of scenario. But once again, very early days. Yeah, and uh, what we're at chasing right now is is the expansion of this uh, significant discovery. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Then let's uh, switch shortly to the T-bill zone. Will you drill there also? First question. And second question, um, I, I saw that you had here uh, hand grab rock samples from historic grab samples, like 15 grams, 21 grams, 13 grams, gold, 22 grams. It looks like there is, uh, um, yeah. how can we say that? Where is smoke? There should be fire, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So the T-bill is effectively a, a little bit more rugged uh, topographically than the GIC, mm -hmm. but it's just across the valley from, from where we see the GIC. And uh, we need to do more work in, in the analysis of the data mm -hmm. today, put together an exploration uh, strategy there. All of our efforts thus far have really been focused on the GIC because we see so much potential there. Mm -hmm. um, nonetheless, over the, the winter months here, prior to the 2025 exploration season, we'll be defining not only an expansion of the GIC uh, um, exploration plan, mm -hmm. but also to go in and, and start getting our minds wrapped around that T-bill. Because like you mentioned, there are some very interesting grades, in, not only in the grab sample, surface sampling, but even in drill intercepts. Mm -hmm. So higher grade uh, you know, uh, mineralization there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to require more work and preparation for us to be very targeted. You know, we've put all of our dollars into this uh, into this program, into the property acquisition. Uh, we've raised a total of about four million dollars, and we're we're just thinking we're really heavily invested in this. We're mm -hmm. uh, we're very targeted though in our approach, so we use our capital very judiciously. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. That's always uh, good to hear. Um, what is going on at the, I hope that I say that correct, Lexin uh, property? Sure. Because yes. it looks like that this is just in the yeah, in the foregarden of Vancouver, it looks a little bit like from the from the property map here. <laughs> yeah. It, we, we, uh, so when we combine the company Omega Pacific, which was effectively a vehicle, um, mm -hmm. and with the asset and the management group coming in concurrently uh, in March of this year, we effectively inherited through that vehicle the Lexan property. We're doing a little bit of work there uh, just to obviously get a better understanding. It's an early stage exploration uh, mm -hmm. property, um, not far from, uh, you know, geologically speaking, certainly uh, from the mascot mine in southern British Columbia, a former producing mine, high grade gold. Um, there's more work to be done there. So we're sort of inching along. Once again, we're very focused in our exploration efforts. And mm -hmm. not only for our technical um, you know, manpower to focus, but also focusing our capital. And so that's why we return back to that GIC target at the Williams property, because we see mm -hmm. so much potential there. We see a lot of value accretion opportunity through the GIC exploration. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. And you will work a lot on that uh, next year, of course. Um, what, uh, when would you say there might be a first resource estimate? Because I think this uh, yeah, proves now really what is in there. 
Yes, uh, that's another very good question. Um, so we, we've drilled really just about two thousand over two thousand meters there combined, uh, you know, with the, on the target at GIC. So we need to do a lot more drilling. I, I believe, dependent upon how our plan gets defined for twenty twenty five, we'll do upwards of ten thousand meters of drilling at GIC. Um, we'll come out with those results, obviously. We'll assess the the breadth and the length and the depth of this uh, the resource the mineralization mineral uh, and and the resource potential there. I think in 2026 we'll get you know a lot closer to uh, the you know the I would say the calculation of a maiden resource there, and it's of mm-hmm. course subject to to the results that we continue to uh, achieve there over the next two exploration seasons. Mm-hmm. Nonetheless, I think you know we've seen proven in other issues um, over the last five years. Uh, I think of uh, Founders Metals in Suriname, for instance. Mm-hmm. We see not just a re- there's, they don't have a resource calculation at this point in time, but they're continuing to prove it through the drill bit, and and that I think will continue. We'll try to emulate that model, continue to produce the results that gives the the community and ourselves as a technical team the confidence to continue drilling, to continue drilling. And when we see that uh, the wholesome nature of all those drill results, then we'll mm-hmm. start looking at a resource calculation. Yeah, which makes really sense. So uh, you said something, of course, you want to work a lot next year, but that costs also money. So what is in the money. bank? Are you financed for that? Uh, no, we are not financed for the 2025 program. As you mm-hmm. can imagine, in Canada, particularly, and, and obviously in British Columbia, we rely on flow-through financing to, to mm-hmm. fund our exploration. So as we continue over the course of the, the final weeks and, and months here in uh, 2024, we'll continue to define our exploration plan and then go back to market to fund, again, a very focused approach. Um, so whether that's a, a five or seven or 10,000 meter program will be determined upon what we think we can achieve there. And that will inform how much uh, capital we raise to, to, uh, to finance that program. Mm-hmm. Okay, super. So last but not least, uh, what is uh, insiders share in the company? What is management holding? Um, who are your shareholders? Yeah, so management holds about 24% of the company, management and affiliates. We've got a strong uh, uh, equity position in the company, a lot fully invested, as we can say. <laughs> um, and we have uh, a, a number of funds in. Of course, we did some flow-through financing, so we have some flow-through funds, uh, two funds specifically in Canada, and a few other funds that we uh, brought into the company with our, our first private placement in April of this year. Um, that was at 50 cents. So we're, we're crawling back up. Uh, we had some slow months during the summertime as far as our share price is concerned. We expect that as we continue to uh, build momentum after our, I think, very positive results from the drill bit, that uh, we'll be able to uh, continue to support those shareholders and, and make sure that they're happy as well. So uh, we've got about um, about 15% total uh, in fund, uh, finance or fund shareholders, mm-hmm. um, and the rest would be retail. Okay, super. So a good, good, uh, a broad variety of shareholders, of course. Yes. So final question, what is the longer term target? Because you are surrounded by several producing mines. So you could be a natural, let's say, feeder takeover target, or do you want to yeah. bring it by yourself in production? <laughs> well, the, you know, that, that's, there is a lot of opportunity mm. to consider in the future. Um, You know, I don't necessarily have a crystal ball, but we no. what we can see is that the Tudagon region of this, mm-hmm. what we call the Golden Horseshoe in the steep, keen terrain, there's a lot of increasing activity there. Um, our, our neighbors are, are developing just about uh, 50 kilometers to the southeast. Um, we've got neighbors to the north having a, enjoying a, a, a bit of a discovery situation as well. So in the future, there, there's some synergies there to, to investigate and, and potentially some consolidation. Um, but there's a lot of time to, to pass between today and, and that period of time. And we've got a lot of work to do to determine w- what real value we can present. And, and we expect to grow pretty significantly through the drill bit. So, um, okay. I guess you could, I could, I would ask you to stay tuned over the course of the next two years on that one. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Super last question, because it just came to my mind. 
What's your what's your prognosis for the gold price 2025? Just a number. <laughs> Just well, a number. What follow, do you feel? <laughs> if I follow Goldman, it's three thousand. But I, I think we're going higher. I mean, this is we're Good. <laughs> we're all in uncharted waters here. This is mm-hmm. a fantastic situation, and to be honest, I'm certainly not the smartest person in the room when it comes to this. And um, but it, it, it certainly has my head scratching and, uh, I think we're going higher. Um, mm-hmm. not only with gold, obviously we talked before our discussion here about silver mm-hmm. copper has been an ongoing discussion for, yep. from a number of years now. And there's in fact, uh, obviously concerns right from the supply side, real valid concerns mm-hmm. on the supply of, of these metals. So, mm-hmm. um, when we couple supply and, and of course the, like in the precious metal side, the, the central bank buying, I, and, and without the, let's call it the Gen Z, uh, mm-hmm. population, the demographic, which is increasingly wealthier year over year. I, I think mm-hmm. we have a tremendous opportunity when, when, the when the broadened general investor really starts to understand the, the mm-hmm. structural implications of what are going on right now. Absolutely. Super. Jason, thank you very much for the insight into your company. Wish you all the best. And uh, I think we see us then on Monday evening at the Zuri Invest Night for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for your time. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Jason Leckham, the CEO of Omega Pacific Resources. And yeah, quite a new exploration company in the right spot, of course, British Columbia in good old Canada. Fantastic. I mean, you have no problem with jurisdiction, infrastructure, with uh, yeah, the whole setup, I would say. And uh, yeah, so the first drills uh, really went well. They have great results. So we will see in 2025 what's coming on and coming out there. So check out the company. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland.